tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software, $100, and starting pricing for high-end software, $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Tariq Radio. I am your gracious host, Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have everybody tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to do our thing and chop up game like we always do, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get into the good game, understand that today's broadcast is brought to you by BoomLifestyle.com. Get ready to experience a new fashion explosion in introducing Boom, that's the ultimate clothing brand for streetwear enthusiasts. Enthusiast, I'm sorry. Get your style game on point with their quality premium apparel available at BoomLifestyle.com. They got um animal totems, nature symbols, positive messages, things to ignite your inner strength. So contact them right now. You're going to get free shipping and 10% off. That's BoomLifestyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right, family, let everybody come on in the room. Y'all hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that share button. Share this on Twitter. Share this on Facebook. Let everybody know we're live. We're going to take that real quick commercial break, family. And I mean real quick. And don't you move a muscle because we will be right back right here on Tariq Radio. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin', by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed. Available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack. And the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames. Who ain't trying to learn the game jive turkeys so if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking get the art of macking book on amazon and barnes and noble right now sucker rated pg that stands for plenty of game jive chumps introducing historical black americans a powerful journey through history discover 33 black american heroes who overcame adversity and shaped our nation's destiny. This book is a tribute to the importance of telling history's truth in its proper context. Empower young minds to uncover the history of America and embrace the courage that paved the way for change. Get your copy of Historical Black Americans today, available now on Amazon and Kindle. Listen, are you ashy as hell? Do you have dry, parched skin? Does your elbows look like elephant knees? If so, you want to get your skin from crusty to lovely, go to Ash 
getkickin.com to get all the lotions, lubricants, and body butters that you need to get your skin in order. They got all types of health and beauty products, everything you need. They got incense, things to make your house smell good, things to make you smell good. So again, go to ashkicking.com. Again, that's ashkicking.com. Why are you scratching your skin like that? Girl, this soap that I use is useless for my skin. Try Adesino soaps. Adesino soaps? Girl, yes, Adesino soaps are all natural and organic. What can it do for my skin? It helps heal dry skin, oily skin, blemishes, wrinkles. It even helps take off your makeup. And get this, what? You choose your favorite fragrance for all sorts of occasions. <laughs> wow. I think I'll try Adesino soaps. Thanks, girl. My pleasure. Go to www.adesinosoaps.com. That's www.adesinosoaps.com. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave a op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Oh, goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself. If you find that you need a little help, gotta stay ready. Ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they think it, you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon juice and don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready. That evil on lurk. Yeah. You are now tuned into the legendary OG. OG. Tariq Nasheed. I was up on this to all my friends. On Tariq Radio. 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 Where is Tariq getting all this cash? And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your gracious host, Tariq Nasheed. Thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We're here. Glad to have y'all in here, family. Ready to do what we do, which is chop up great game. And I hope you guys retweeted this to let everybody know that we're live right now, family. I hope y'all let everybody know that we are popping right now, man. I'm glad to have y'all in here. And uh, by the way, you know, we got the new fragrances for the Root Work deodorant. We still got some more coming in. We got two new fragrances on the website, ladies and gentlemen. We got Mango Mojo. We got Mango Mojo and we got Lucky Lavender, ladies and gentlemen. Very smooth and great scents that you need to get and you are you're going to love it. You are going to love it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a lot of stuff we're going to talk about um, when we get to... 2,500 people, then I'm going to get on camera. How about that? I get on camera. We got a little over 2,000. We get 2,500 people in here. I'm going to pop on camera for the family. I'm going to do that. Um, election. We got to touch on that. Um, a lot of other stuff going on that we got to talk about as far as the Israeli stuff and the Palestinian stuff and... Um, I got to talk about the the Tamar Braxton situation with Krishan. I want to get into that a little bit later. A lot of things we're going to touch on, family. And also, I got to thank everybody for the support of um, the museum. We got vandalized this week, and there was an outpouring of support, man. And I, you know, I didn't even expect it. And I got to thank the family for that. I got to thank all you guys. Um, a lot of people were hitting up the um, Hidden History Museum site, and I saw there was a lot of donations coming in. I, I didn't even ask for it, but I, I appreciate everybody for looking out just on GP. I wouldn't even, to, to be honest, I wasn't even thinking about it. Uh, for those who don't know, we um, our museum this weekend was vandalized again. We got vandalized again, and I put some information up on uh, my Twitter. Let me look if I can, let me look and see if I can find some of the stuff that I put up. Um, yeah, you know what, let me, I'm gonna post the video, our surveillance video, I'm gonna put that on. 
I'm going to show that real quick. I'm going to touch on that. Okay, look at all. We almost got 3,000 real quick. Okay, let me get on camera for the family. Let me do that. Let me hop on this cam. Boom. There it is. I'm here to make it more personal. Let me get here on the camera with the family. All right. Let me get on camera with the family. How y'all living? And they go, oh yeah, let me, let me show y'all. We got the new root work sense. All right. Um, this is, um, mango mojo and this is lucky lavender. All these are great scents right here. Very good smells right here. And you can get these new scents at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right. But listen, so going back to what I was saying, man, at the museum, we got vandalized again, man. We got people who keep coming up there. See, it was some white Hispanic dudes who came up and spray painted the front of the um, the security gates. About on the 1st of November, somebody spray painted the gate. This time they did a more elaborate spray painting. Um, in September, somebody sprayed um, a little piece on the side a little bit. So, you know, we've been getting targeted repeatedly. And... Some non-black folks doing this stuff. And our museum is a cultural center. It's a, it's a cultural center for, for black history. And if you have a black institution that's um that the community knows represents black history, black excellence, black grassroots, and it's getting hit all the time, you know. It's not a coincidence. We got to put two and two together. We got to put two and two together. Um, let me show y'all the clip of the, the video surveillance that we got. Now, these guys, this wasn't like just some random gangbangers walking by and say, oh, hey, let's tag this building. These dudes drove up in a damn Mercedes with some fake license plates on them. All right. These dudes had some fake license plates and I've had private investigators run these plates left and right. They don't even exist, man. The plates do not exist. Um, also, when you see something like this happen and then you see all the sock puppet accounts, hey, hey, hey it might be a hoax or something. Oh, that when y'all start seeing that Cointel Pro talk, all of the sock puppet accounts start talking about it might be a hoax. And, you know, that's something else going on. All right. But let me show. Let me show this video here. Let me go to the the thing and um, show you guys our museum. And you guys can support the museum. Y'all can come on through. We're open uh, Monday through Friday. Y'all just come on through, man, and take a look around and, and show love. But the guys pulled up at like midnight on Sunday. All right. They pulled up, got the spray paint cans. These guys are in a Mercedes. All right, we got good shots of them. So this was targeted. This was targeted. So we got the guy, white Hispanic dude, hitting the place up, and his partner. Uh, let me scroll down. We even got we got the license plate, but again, let me go forward. The license plate, you're right here. That's the license plate right there. And boy, we didn't have private investigators run that plate. That don't exist nowhere. So for these guys to do something, that that's that's a close-up of one of the suspects. So for, for the guy to do something like that, it is, for the guy to do something like that, and yeah, they get these janky plates. Yeah, these plates that don't exist because I'm talking to some private investigators and, you know, people who they were telling me, hey, man, people with like, um, you know, fake plates like that. I mean, usually that's some undercover cop type of shit. This is what I'm look. Look, y'all saw the plates. You guys do your due diligence. Run those plates. See if you can run those plates and see what what comes up. All right. See if you can run those plates and see what's up. But man, uh, there that's why a lot of people are speculating that it could be possibly folks connected with law enforcement 
doing this type of stuff. And again, we've had undercover cops come up to the museum and do hate videos. They've sent some of their Negro minions up there. You know, there was this one dude, he made a YouTube video. He was actually, he's a cop, he's a black tether who's a cop and came up there and did a hate video. Well, I don't like it. You don't feel like no museum to me on some of that. And this dude's a damn cop. So why would, why y'all sending cops up there doing little goofy shit like that? Yeah. Yeah, man. And look, listen, because I put this on social media, you know, a lot of people were making noise about it. A lot of people were hitting up, you know, LAPD, hitting up the, the city, so, you know, they kind of forced them to say something. So, you know, the police, they've been reaching out um, because of the pressure. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm you know, it's, it's looking real weird. Somebody said, turn the volume up. How am I doing with the volume? Is the volume good? Somebody said something about the volume. Is the volume good? Yeah, some they got some undercover cop talking about. Oh, it don't feel like no museum to me. Yeah, okay, that okay. When y'all doing stuff like that, let me, dude. This museum has had so many people triggered. The fact that we did this thing on a grassroots level, and we didn't go groveling to the dominant society for resources. We did it on our own and got it popping. We started having our events, our monthly events that were the talk of the town. You guys will see the footage. We have um, events up there. It, it was popping. It was popping. So now we have this institution that we created from the grassroots. All black. We've marked it as a black designation. Not black in this, black in that, not minority. We we had a, a straight up and down, top to bottom, black institution, grassroots. Folks, you've seen how tethers and white supremacists and wannabe white supremacists have been so triggered by the museum. That's not normal. You think? That's not normal. It brings out that type of jealousy and, and, and people are just losing sleep over it. You, you dig? These folks, man, we haven't even been open a year and the constant attacks, the constant jealousy, the constant whining, the behind the scenes stuff with the city, doing stuff with permits and requiring this and requiring that. And then these people showing up here with janky ass license plates, so I was going to have my, my sister go, um, shout out to CeCe Freeman. I was going to have her go and um, take care of some paperwork stuff with us to file at um, LAPD yesterday. But then a, a lieutenant called me and said they wanted to come by and meet with me. So I told her to hold off. We might still have to go down there because so it was a black lieutenant, dude, hit me up. They wanted to come to the museum yesterday, but no, we weren't there. So he said he wants to meet up with me today to talk about what happened. Okay, I'm like, cool. It's a black lieutenant. So I meet up with him today. He comes down to the museum today. The black lieutenant. And then, you know, I'm thinking, oh, cool, a brother. Okay, we got a brother who understands and, you know, family, when this, they sent Uncle Ruckus. Family, they sent Uncle Ruckus down there to the museum to talk, dude. Family, y'all don't, y'all really don't understand. They sent the Negro Whisperer. Family, they sent this nigga down to Splain. They sent this, the, the black lieutenant down to Splain. Family. Where, I wish I had a Bible in here. If I'm, what I'm saying, I'm lying. I'm dying if I'm lying. Family. So he comes down, hey brother, hey, all that hey brother talk and all of that. And um, I'm like explaining, hey, what happened? And they've already done an investigation from last year, yeah, because when we were vandalized. So he came in with all of that information. Yes, um, hey brother, we did an investigation, and you know, we we it was from last year, and you know, we I don't know why nobody never followed up with you, but um, you know, we came to a dead end, and um, I said, all right, brother, you know, hey man. 
you know, we keep, you know, people keep coming over here, you know, hitting us up and vandalizing our, our, our institution, brother. And well, you know, um, you know, as you understand, there's a lot of gangs in this area, brother. And, um, you know, there are a lot of gangs who, um, you know, they look for blank canvases and they, um, so he's, he's explaining, like talking about gangs and this ain't a gang thing. Cause I, I know who the gangs are in that area. Ain't no Mexican gangs in that area, by the way. There's no Mexican gangs in that area. So it wasn't a gang thing. They didn't put up gang graffiti, but yeah, he was splaining. He was splaining. And I was like, well, look, brother, listen. When they, you know, when other institutions get hit up, you know, I, I kind of want the same protection. Now, when I start bringing up the racial element, he started kind of crashing out a little bit. <laughs> Family. He started crashing out a little bit. He was cool and then he would crash out. He's family. He would start bucking his eyes when I brought up the racial thing. Cause I'm like, no, 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 I'm not, you know, no, I always bring it back to what I think it really is. This is like racial targeting. So when every, every time I brought it back to that, his eyes start bucking. So I'm thinking he might've been recording me. So, he was like, I was like, you know, I don't think it was no gang stuff. He's like, yeah, you're right, because, you know, we looked in the database and it wasn't any kind of gang markings. But you got to understand there are a lot of people who do graffiti and, you know, they try to, you know, um, you know, they'll look for something to do graffiti on to kind of express their art. I'm like, what, nigga? What? Express their art? I said, brother, man, y'all don't, y y the police, you guys don't talk like this when... A synagogue, somebody spray paints a synagogue or they spray paint an Asian building. When I said that, that nigga, his, I, ho, ho, hold up now. Ho, wait, wait, wait. See, 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 see. See, I, I, I had a feeling you were going to go there now. Ho, ho, hold on, don't, don't say that now. I, 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 I can't confirm or deny nothing like that now. Ho, ho, hold on. And I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at this nigga like, why are you getting so spicy, nigga? I said that, he got real spicy. Like, whoa, nigga, <laughs> he, his, dude, I'm, if I'm lying, I'm fine. This nigga, the eyes start bucking when I said that. Every time I'm, I said, well, brother, I mean, when you guys know when, if the Asian businesses, if somebody was spray painting an Asian business over and over again, man, you guys will be immediately doing the hate crime. Ho, 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 wait, wait, ho, wait, time out now. Ho, wait, we, 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 that's speculative. That is highly speculative. You can't say that, brother. Uh-uh, no, don't, don't say that now. I'm like, what is wrong with this nigga? <laughs> Whoa. Then he would straighten back up. <clears throat> so, so, but what, what I'm, I'm trying to say, I understand your position. I, I, he, then he would snap back into Bryant Gumble mode. He would, he would have cool Tourette's, man. He would, he would snap. He would crash out into like Uncle Ruckus and then get back to Bryant Gumble. Dude, I'm like, what the f nigga? And I'm like, oh man. He saw it in my face. I'm like, oh, they didn't sent the nigga to. They didn't sent you down here to splain, man. They didn't sent you down here to splain. I'm, I'm looking at him now, like, okay, nigga. I'm up here just looking at him like this. So he's feeling my energy. So he's trying his best to straighten up. <clears throat> so, so, but I can understand you, um, you know, being concerned about any type of racial targeting. But, 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 but from my experience. Um, there are a lot of gangs and, you know, there's a lot of places that have graffiti sprayed on them. You know, I said, brother, ain't nobody else getting hit over here, man. And I'm the only black owned business here. Well, hold on now. What you trying to say and what you trying to imply that, that, that's, that's speculative. You, 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 you can't say that now. Hold on, hold on. Now, let's not go there. Now time's out now. It's time's out for all that. We don't know. We, I cannot confirm or deny any of the allegations you is making. <laughs> nigga the every time I brought up the fact hey we're the only black owned businesses here and we're, we're getting hit up this dude would crash out <laughs> 
Dude. He would have Coon Tourette's, man. I'm like, man, they, they sent this dude down here to Splain, man. They sent this dude down here to Splain. So they kept wanting me to do a police report online. They kept emphasizing that. So um, what you can do, because um, I'm thinking that he was going to do the police report. I'm like, are you going to do the police report? Um, no, no, no. What you can do, it's best to just do it online. Do it online, and um, um, that'll take care of it. We'll do our investigation. Um, we'll look into everything, and um, we'll just make sure everything is on. We'll, we'll make sure we're on top of everything. And what I do, what I, I'm going to assign cars, police cars, to kind of drive by the Jefferson area to make sure everything is good. And, uh, you know, um. So he kept wanting me to do it online. And then I got another call from another um, detective. Hey, 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 I heard you met up with um, detective, I mean, Lieutenant, whoop de whoop. And, um, you know, we're just following up because we didn't, shout out to Sir Major because they didn't hit up the mayor's office. So, yeah, we got, uh, we done went to the higher ups to get this stuff, you know, prioritized. Yeah, so a lot of calls have been made, a lot of emails have been made to get this prioritized. So, you know, and, and I need y'all, the family, to make some noise about this too. Holler at the mayor, holler at the LAPD and let them know this needs to be investigated. We have to be protected and get the same protection as everybody else. And I kept bringing that up. And... um Another detective wanted me to file online, file a, a police report online. They kept emphasizing online. They kept emphasizing doing it online. Now, here's the thing. When you file a police report online, they give you the option. There's a, a question. Do you think it was racially motivated? If you say yes, you can't file it online. You would have to go in. Because, see, that's different because they have to report all of the alleged racial incidents to the FBI. All right. The racial incidents, that's a little more serious and they got to take that to the FBI. So the, the, the option, if you say it wasn't racial, then you could just file it online and then they ain't going to do shit. No, this was, we're being racially targeted because I believe because we're the only black owned business over there, they're targeting us because of that. They're targeting, targeting us because of that. We have a black history museum, a black institution that's promoting black excellence. So yeah, anytime we do that, it gets targeted. So yes, it is racial. I allege and suspect that this is racial. And every time I bring that up to the cop, the eyes were bucking. I'm not lying. This dude's eyes was bucking. I think his job was to try to deter me from pointing out the racial element of it. Because the thing is, if the feds start investigating, they're going to see some of these suspects, what kind of ties to police they have. You see what I'm saying? They start looking at all of the people that's doing little things to harass the museum and all of that. They're going to start looking and seeing who's clicked in with law enforcement. Yeah, because some of these people are clicked in with law enforcement. Again, there's been undercover cops up there. Proven, proven, proven undercover cops coming up there to make hate videos. Yeah. So... We're, we're still going to file the um, reports and all of that stuff. And, you know, we got to do what we got to do, you know. But again, I thank everybody for supporting. And people can still support the museum, man. Support us, man. Because, you know, this is grassroots and this is what we got to go through. We go through this nonsense daily. We're going through this stuff daily. So go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, hiddenhistorymuseum.com, and, and, and get involved in, in, and, um, contribute and let's make a difference here. Yeah, we're being strong and vigilant, but damn, you know? And again, we're going to have, um, while we're waiting on our conditional use permits to come in, and I think that's another thing too, because we're, we're in the process of getting the conditional use permits and that, that involves some of the community councils and all of that. 
right where we're in the middle of that, this this vandalism just keeps on going on um, as a way possibly to show the committee, hey, look, this place is a hotbed for vandalism. So we shouldn't give it a, a, a conditional use permit because look at all this vandalism. It's the, dude, to be honest, they're running the same play that they were doing to the marathon store. All right. They were doing the same play to the marathon store. You know, they kept having weird stuff going on up there, doing the um, shaking everybody down and the city pressuring the landlord to not sell to Nipsey. Uh, <laughs> It's a lot, brother. It's a lot, family. It's a lot, but they, they're using the same playbook, you know? And, you know, if people keep, they keep allowing people to vandalize the place. See, that's why we have to report it because when we don't do that, that can cause a nuisance injunction where they say, hey, there's criminal activity at your location and you're not doing anything about it. They had a nuisance injunction on Nipsey. The Marathon store had a nuisance injunction on it. Look all this stuff up that I'm telling you. So they'll have somebody vandalize a place and they do this and they've done this to the black businesses out in the South Central LA area. They'll have somebody up there doing real janky stuff and then go to the owner. Hey man, there's, there's gang activity. There's vandals. You haven't done anything about it. So we're going to put a nuisance injunction on your business and you got to be up out of here and you got to pay this fine. And they run this kind of game on us, man. The, the LA is funny. LA is funny. It's a funny thing, man. But I digress. But we, we're doing what we do. So again, everybody go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com and show your support and show your love. And we greatly appreciate that. Um, let's get to what we're talking about with Diddy. Sean Diddy Combs. Sean Diddy Combs. Yeah, somebody said they did that to the black bars where you live. Yeah, they do that. They did it to a brother in Long Beach. There was a brother who was running a bar in Long Beach. Some Hispanic dude went in there, uh, left, got drunk, and then got into an accident, and they shut the, the brother's bar down because the Hispanic dude who had drugs in his system, they tried to blame the bar for getting him drunk and then shut the damn bar down. Y'all remember that? That happened in Long Beach a, a year or so ago. So they do weird stuff to the black businesses out here, man. That's why we don't have any of them. We don't have no black businesses out here in L.A. like that. I'm like one of the handful. And when I mean handful, handful. It's only a few for real black owned businesses in L.A. It's only a handful, man, unfortunately. And even some of these spots we think are black owned, like like D's Soul Food, it's Mexicans own that, yeah. But um, but I digress. Um, but let's get into the Diddy thing. Let's get into the Diddy thing. So, for those who don't know, Sean Puffy Combs, boy, they didn't hit him. His ex girlfriend Cassie, who was an artist on his label. She didn't hit him with a civil suit and some crazy accusations. Her accusations was that she was repeatedly raped by Diddy. She said she was raped and forced to have sex with male sex workers. She said she was beat up and man, these are some strong allegations, man. These are some strong allegations. Let me look at some of this stuff here and watch some of the words that's being used here. Sex trafficked. These words are used for a reason. She said she was sex trafficked. Let me pull up some of the um, articles on this. All right. Singer and actress Cassie filed a lawsuit against her ex-boyfriend, Sean Diddy Combs, accusing him of sex trafficking and sexual assault. She alleges that she was traffic raped and viciously beaten by Combs during their course, during the course of their relationship after years in silence and darkness. I'm ready to tell my story, man, 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 man. Um, looks like and she's trying to get 30 million. She's trying to get 30 million dollars. And um, that, that's allegedly, allegedly, that's what they're saying. Um, they said she was trying to 
for the sa- for the past six months. Hold on, hold on. Let me read this. Wait. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Mrs. Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million. So she's been trying to get a bag, allegedly, out of Puffy under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. So allegedly, Cassie's been trying to finesse a bag. <clears throat> She's been trying to, allegedly been trying to get a bag from Puffy. Um, I think she has a zaddy now. I think she has a zaddy. And according to her, she said it was a fast-paced, drug-fueled lifestyle. He busted her lip. There was an alleged relationship with her and Kid Cuddy, and they are alleging that Puffy blew up Kid Cuddy's car. So there's a lot of accusations being thrown out here. One thing that stood out, she said she was forced to engage. Hold on. Where is this? Where is this? Where is this? Where is this? She was forced to engage in sex acts with male sex workers while Diddy was whacking it off and filming the encounters. Okay. All right. All right. So she's, she's saying that. Puffy was cucking, allegedly. This is what she's saying. I don't know how true it is, but she's saying that um, Puffy had some dudes smash her out while he sat in the corner looking. Wow. Okay. So male escorts, and those dudes are usually bisexual. Hmm. Uh, now this comes at a very interesting time because there is a, um, a law out there in New York called the adult survivors act that allows sexual abuse victims to file civil suits against their, uh, assailants, alleged assailants after the statutes of limitations expired. And there's like a one year window to bring a case under the law when the, the statutes end. So she had a week left. All right, so she had a week left before she could bring this particular suit, all right? The Adult Survivors Act. So she had a week left. So before the statutes was up, before she could get the bag, this was her last ditch effort. This this was the Hail Mary to get the bag, all right? So there's a few things with this, family. No, yeah, there's been a lot of rumors about Puffy. There's been a lot of rumors. I'm not. I don't know what's true, what's not true. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's very interesting the timing of her doing this. You know, just the timing. She's trying to get that bag. She didn't got her as Zaddy now. What is Cassie's? the The name is Ventura. Is that her husband's name or is Ventura her last name? Is she like a Latina? What is Cassie family? Y'all help me out. Is Cassie Latina? Yeah, it sounds like a money grab. I'm not defending anybody. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm not defending anybody. I'm not defending anybody. I'm just speaking on this thing from all angles. I ain't defending nobody because I don't know anything. All right. She's Filipino. Filipino. Got it. I'm just looking at this thing from all angles. Somebody, some people are saying Latina. Some people are saying Filipino. All right. Ventura is her maiden name. So it's Filipino. Filipino and what? So you see full Filipino? Okay. But listen, 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 listen. You get a lot of these women from these backgrounds. And, and I want to talk to brothers for a minute. I want to talk to the brothers for a minute. See, what happens is, guys, y'all get these women who are, you know, these non-black women. A lot of times, these Latinas or these, some of these Asian women. And they're down for a lot of freaky, freaky stuff at the time. And they're very submissive and they go along with all of your weird quirks. All right. But later on, when they get older... The money dries up. They realize, you know, they get with the, they go get a zaddy. 
And y'all better understand some of these women, when they get a zaddy, when they get a zaddy, they use the Negro as they get out a hoe and free card. Yeah, they use you as the get out of hoe and free card. They do real freaky stuff, and then all they got to do later on is say, well, that nigga I was with drugged me and forced me to do it. And I'm, I'm, this is the same MO that we keep seeing. That's all they got to say. You become that get out of home and free card. Then they become a victim. Remember Kim Kardashian. What did she say? When I was doing the sex tape with Ray J, I was on drugs. Oh, I was on ecstasy. Something like that. Allegedly, she said something like that, right? Yeah, Kim was on that. I was kind of, I was high. Yeah. They pulled the I was high and drugged out. That's the Othello thing. Just like they, they pulled that on Bill Cosby. Yeah, we all laid up with Bill Cosby, but he drugged us. and We were all high and it was drug and rape. It was a drugging and raping going on. It's the same M.O. Y'all got to watch it. getting with these women of these different ethnic backgrounds and they're down for the freaky stuff. And then y'all go overboard with it. You go overboard and then later on, all they got to do, he forced me to do it. I was trafficked. Look at the words. I was trafficked. Same language they use for R. Kelly. Huh? Yep. But here is the thing with, with Diddy. With Diddy. It looks like they might be setting Diddy up for a bigger Rico case because of the language they're using. Now, this is a civil case. Let's okay, let's be under, let's understand that. This is a civil case, but just the public perception. So now they're criminalizing Diddy using very specific language, trafficking and um, he had his people do this and he, he was doing that. He was having people participate in the raping of her and forcing her to do this and, um, blowing up cars and all of that stuff. Now tie this in with the Keefe D situation. They got Keefe D in jail on the Tupac murder. So now family they can start setting up Puffy and Bad Boy Records as a criminal enterprise, This is which is what they do to a lot of black labels. They find a constant, or they try to thread together a, a consistent level of criminal activity, allegedly, and then say, okay, well, this was a criminal enterprise going all the way back to the 90s. Eh? They can say, I mean, this this guy, he was putting hits on people. He blew up cars. He allegedly gave Keefe D and those guys money. You know, Keefe D is running his mouth, yelling, Puffy Puffy gave me this and Puffy Puffy gave me that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they want to arrest Keefe D. And they got him talking about he ain't even got money for a lawyer. So you know Keefe D is going to say whatever. If they get Keefe D on the stand, he's giving it all up. Yeah, she wasn't underage. So the, the trafficking thing, all right? They keep using the word trafficking. Now, she wasn't underage, but they keep using the word traffic. Trafficking, trafficking, trafficking. All right? So looks like they might be trying to cook up a Rico charge, and that'll be a big fish for them. Like Eddie Griffith said, man, Eddie Griffin said, they don't let no brother get up out of here clean. And they let Puffy make a lot of money over the years. So, yeah, they're not going to let you get out the game clean. They got to dirty you up a little bit. And they, you know, Puffy has gotten out of those, um, a lot of those other cases he's been in. Remember, Puffy, you know, had Johnny Cochran, 
getting him out of that shooting with with him and Shine, you know. Puffy's been using his paper, as, as a person should, to evade prosecution for a long time. So, you know, they, they're going to try to get a, possibly try to get a RICO thing going and bring up all that stuff. I can see what their RICO is going to say. Well, Puffy was with trafficking the women and there's all types of weird sex stories going on and um, blowing up people's cars and the... Uh, um, gang members this and giving gang members that and there's a shooting in the club and um giving the bodyguards this and notice they got all these bodyguards saying all of this reckless stuff about them online you think they get some former employee and then have them sit up there online and just say all the most reckless stuff they can say you know sounds like they're trying to yeah yeah that that city college death too yeah, Puffy is he he's escaped prosecution for a long time. They were like, hey, you know what? Let's tally all that stuff up and do a big case that he can't wiggle out of. See, we gotta know how these folks think. You know? We gotta know how these people think. So yeah, the way they're kind of dogpiling on him right now, it sounds like they're trying to set up a big case. So that it's interesting to see how all of this stuff is going to play out. And speaking of that, you know, when when you get former employees making accusations, like the dude who's um, accusing Will Smith of getting dug out by Dwayne Martin, and I'm not going to play the clip of the dude. The dude was on Tasha Kay's show, and he's supposed to be a, an assistant to Will, and I don't think this guy was... Um, you know, really clicked in the way he's making it seem. But Will gave him a shout out and um, he used that as an opportunity to kind of flip on Will. And Jada was on the Breakfast Club saying something to the effect of the guy was trying to shake down some money from them. You dig? So sound like this guy's trying to get a bag and the guy talking about, yeah, I went in a room and uh, I had a key and uh, I saw Will bent over. And Dwayne Martin murdering him. He was mur- get having anal sex with him. Murdering him. <laughs> to, to be honest, I don't believe, dude. Yeah, I don't I don't really believe, dude, to be honest. I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that dude walked in and saw that. Again, this dude is trying to sell a book or something like that. The dude is trying to sell a book. So I think it's a clout chase. I actually think it's a big ass clout chase. You know, people say real reckless stuff online. Yeah, he was getting bent over, getting murdered. He was murdering him. (laughs) Murdering, stop it. I, I don't believe that Will would be out there spreading bussy with somebody holding on to a key and I stop it. I don't believe it. <clears throat> I don't believe it. So I think he's just playing on rumors that's been around for a long time. It is. But we got to watch people in our circles. We got to watch the kind of people that, um, that hang around. We can't bring around people who are hard luck ass folks, people who ain't got nothing to lose. You can't bring those kind of people around. That brings me to what happened with Tamar. Tamar had Krishan Rock at her concert, and Krishan Rock basically crashed the concert, got on stage drunk, um, and then allegedly assaulted one of Tamar's background singers. Let me let me find the stuff on that. That was a whole train wreck and a mess. Hold on. Let me let me pull up some of the video of that. Where's the video? So here's Krishan. She's on stage twerking and drunk and just a whole big mess. Hold on one second. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? All right. Hold on. Let me see if I can play the audio here. Hold on. Where we at? <laughs> 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 okay, 
okay, so they were up there booing her, I think. They were booing her. Okay. So they were basically booing her up there. They were they were booing her because they didn't want to see that. I wouldn't want to see that either. I'm paying money to see Tamar and Tony Braxton. I think wasn't Tony Braxton up there? Wasn't Tony Braxton up there too? So yeah, man, if I'm paying sixty, seventy dollars to see some some talent. I don't want to see no drunk ass reality star waddle on stage. Nobody wants to see that if I'm paying. No. No, no, no. And there's other video of um Krishan basically harassing the background singers. They're trying to move her hand out of the way. She's touching on the background singers and they're like, get off me. Hold on, let me play that real quick. So this is Krishan. Hold on, look at this. Hold on. I will come and so we be in these small rooms. Um, and so we put one right now, they said, don't wait, stand up, we'll stay there. And so we got you this cake, this love and work cake. We're so proud of you that you believed in yourself. And then uh, you know, everybody holds you down. They got pineapple in it. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and so. Y'all ain't never been to Tamar's house, but I have, and there's something that's missing at her house on her walls. And so, as successful as she's been, she doesn't have any gold. Up All right, so you see the, the background singers are like, get away from me. The background singers are like, move. What are you doing? Yeah? Dude. Now, and, and Tamar said she didn't let her on stage. Tamar said she just kind of waddled out there. She just kind of walked out there on stage because because Tamar was chopping it up with her behind the scenes. So because T Tamar was chopping it up with her behind the scenes, you know, Krishan, OK, thinks, OK, she's the star. She's a star, too. And she's going to walk out there and just kind of crash the, the show. And here is one of um, Tamar's people explaining how um, the Krishan lady um, socked and punched Tamar's um, background singer, the guy, the brother, the LGBT brother. Um, hold on, let me play that one real quick. All right, hold on, hold on. It breaks my heart that we even have to go this route and even have to go back and forth on social media for those that don't know, I am the tour manager for Tamar Braxton, the Love and War Tour. And what I'm going to address is the assault. We were in the room. At the end of the show, Krishan walked up to Tamar. Troy brought her out a cake. Tamar put her hands in the cake. She had a right hand full of cake and some cake in her mouth. And Krishan came out and was like, where you going, sis? Got to go on stage. And I'm looking like, huh? Like, what's, what's happening? And Tamar, like, the, the show is over. What do you mean? She said, I'm going to go on stage. And she's like, huh? You ain't, you ain't been out? You haven't went out there already? Because she was supposed to go out during the twerk session. She hadn't been out. She, she, Krishan hadn't been out. So I was like, come on, ladies. Let's just take this in the dressing room. And in the dressing room, it was me, Tamar, and Krishan. Tamar was trying to figure out why hadn't Krishan. Why didn't Krishan go out during the twerk session? And she's looking at me, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, Krishan, I, I don't know why she didn't go out. So Krishan mm -hmm. breaks down and starts crying. And I felt bad, and the Holy Ghost in me, because I carry it everywhere with me, I began to give her a hug and everything like that, because I like Krishan. I like her. And, you know, and I was like, I don't want to see nobody with their feelings hurt, or I don't want nobody feeling some sort of way, because there was a big line of miscommunication that took place. So I began to try to comfort her and, and hug her and be like, no, don't cry because it's not that, you know what I'm saying? We, nobody uh -huh. was trying to, I don't want you to feel no sort of way. And this was just in the dressing room. And this was me. We fast and this happens to her all the time. And she felt, you know, that this was just like, that shouldn't happen to her because, you know, she was going to go out. David and Mooney come in. They both do makeup. And we're all at this point talking about what happened. Tamar is saying, Mooney, what happened? Da, da, da. Mooney was saying that Krishan was not 
on the side of the stage when it was time for the twerk part. Mooney is the choreographer and he also does makeup. Mooney was saying Krishan was not on the side of the stage. And then James comes in the room. So at this point, it's me, Krishan, David, Mooney, Tamar, James. James comes in the room and notices that Krishan is upset. By the mirror, Krishan is on the right-hand side. James is right next to her. He was consoling her. And I was literally right next to James. Okay. And Tamar asking James, well, what happened? Why didn't Krishan go out there during the twerk session? And James said, we was looking for her on the side of the stage, and she was not on the side of the stage. And Krishan got very upset, and she was like, I was on the side of the stage. I was there. Where, where else would I go, man? You lying. Like, that's Cap. I was, I was on the side of the stage. Like, I was there on the side of the stage. And James said, no, no, you, you wasn't. We called for you there. Krishan said, say, say I wasn't there one more time. Say I wasn't there on the side of the stage one more time. James was like, I'm telling you, we was calling you and you. Bah, 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 bah. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh shit. Literally happened just like that. And here I am, like, this girl just hit this boy a couple of times with them big ass rings on her finger. And I'm just like, no, this is not happening. This is not happening. This is not happening. I get Krishan to the other side of the room. At this point, James' face is leaking with blood. Okay, now that's enough of that. Okay, so y'all get the point. Y'all get the point. All right, wait, how, how are we with the sound? How are we with the sound? Could y'all hear that pretty good? We good? All right, all right. So y'all get the point. Oh, listen, family, you can't have these elevated losers around. You can't have these elevated losers around. You know, the book 48 Laws of Power, there's a, a passage in there where they say, avoid the unlucky and unfortunate people. You got these people out here who are train wrecks. Unfortunately, social media has elevated train wrecks. You put them on a reality show, and now you get somebody, you got people out here who couldn't function normally in everyday life. You put them on a reality show or you elevate them in some kind of social media, all of a sudden you've platformed these people as some type of influencers. But what happens is that just magnifies their dysfunctions. You dig? You got these people who are losers in real life. Unfortunately, you can't save everybody. They're elevated losers, man. That's just the long and short of it. And bringing them around because they have popularity. Because Tamar probably brought her around. Hey, this girl is popular on social media. Let me bring her around so the young folks can, you know, kind of ride with me. But no, you don't bring train wrecks around when you got an established career. You got an established crew. You don't bring that type of nonsense around established people. I heard Tony Braxton really didn't want to have nothing to do with it, allegedly. I don't know. But Tamar is a real brand. She is a real talent. She has talent. Tamar is very talented. Her background singers are very talented. You have a, a talented group of people. You don't have to associate with that degenerate, no talent, elevated loser nonsense. Yig? Y'all stop bringing that stuff around. As I keep telling y'all, that whole sexy red, Sukihana, Krishan, filth. That's something that you leave. You're supposed to leave that somewhere else. You, when you bring that around, it's a problem. I'm not. When I say that, I'm not being mean spirited. When I, when, when, when you see the BET Awards and they got pregnant hood rats barefoot twerking in the aisle, that's not something that reputable people need to be around. That's not something that reputable people need to be around. 
We don't have to embrace all of that filth, man. We don't have to embrace it just because it's popular. It, this is elevated loser, man. It's elevated filth. These are elevated losers. We don't have to embrace that. We got this 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 church mentality where you, you know, and, and the Braxton girls, you know, they come out of the church. And in, in black churches, y'all know what it is. Every Sunday, you got the losers in the community coming to give their testimony. And I hate to, I'm, I'm just being real. I'm not trying to beat up on nobody. But the the crackheads and the, the simpletons would come in on Sunday and give their testimony. And everybody's, okay, go take your time. Yes, first of all, I give honor to God. Um, I am three weeks clean of crack cocaine. Um, I relapsed um, three Mondays ago, but I'm clean right now. I'm trying to get a little piece of these donations, so I'm going to get some more crack. I mean, so I can get myself together. Um, praise the Lord. You know, we, we used to, we used to that. We're used to these weirdos coming up in the church and giving their testimony and we're embracing them. Oh, it's okay if you're a crackhead. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, people, we, we, we don't have to, enough black folks, we don't have to embrace all of that filth, man. We ain't got to embrace it. And embracing the Christians and all of these people, they will drag you down. They will drag you down with them. You got these people who ain't got nothing going on. Nothing is popping with them. These folks will drag you in the gutter with them. They have nothing to lose. See, with the Krishan and people like that, who, who's basically known for being train wrecks, they have nothing to lose. They have absolutely nothing to lose. So for them to come in and, and tear your shit up, and destroy your brand and assault one of your singers. So now your singer, this guy can be like, hey, you know, there's a, I might need to get a bag out of uh, the Braxtons. Cause now you didn't vault, you, you didn't invited this maniac to come up here to your, your joint and she assaults one of your people who's on the payroll. So now that dude can get a bag. You know, if he, if he wants to go there, so, yeah, you don't put your people in that situation by bringing these elevated losers around. Man, we don't have to embrace these type of people. Yeah? We don't have to embrace them. And there's just people out here who don't have anything going on, and they've embraced being losers, and social media creates a platform for us to see losers and be like, well, damn, I'm crazy, but I ain't that crazy. You know, so they got this toothless maniac who's running around here fighting everybody with the baby and and and, and, and with this baby. Here's my thing. Krishan has a baby by, by Blueface. And my, my thing is with the baby, just hold the baby's head up. I'm every time I see Krishan with that poor baby. Every time I see her with that baby, the baby is flopping around. Hold, I'm screaming, hold the baby's head. If you want to smoke drugs or be drunk or whatever you want to do, not saying you do any of that. I don't know what you do. Hold the baby's head. That's all I ask of Krishan. Just hold that baby's head. Every time I see her with that baby, I'm screaming my my anxiety goes up. Hold the goddamn baby's head. The baby be just flopping all over the place. Lord. Poor baby. Damn. Can we stop elevating these maniacs, dude? Can we stop elevating these maniacs? And where she's from out there in Baltimore. She's from Baltimore. And I think the, the Braxtons, they're from that Baltimore area. So I, I think they felt like they got a camaraderie with them. But we gotta be, we gotta understand something, family. 
a lot of folks out of that Baltimore area. And look, we got some good folks from Baltimore. We got some good people from Baltimore. We do. We got some riders in Baltimore. And I've talked about the Baltimore, that Maryland area. You got some people that are very damaged out there in the Baltimore area going all the way to slavery because you had some of them breeding farms out there in Maryland. Family, they had them breeding farms out there in Maryland. And there were people who were forced to have sex with their relatives during antebellum slavery. That's why out there in Baltimore, that area has a lot of high incest rates out there. The incest rates are very high out there. You understand? Your Jada, your Jada's from that area. You see these people with these dysfunctions, but there's a lot of that incest that was happening that goes on out there in that area. Remember Monique? Monique is from there. She was, there was some incest stuff going on with her brother. Remember? Some stuff going on with the brother. So yeah. Out there, yeah, they got the highest heroin, heroin addiction. You saw me on No Jumper? Shout out to No Jumper. Oh, yeah, I'm on a new episode of No Jumper with uh, my brother Flacco that came out today. So after you guys watch this, you can watch that. But, yeah, Baltimore had a high incest rate. There's a lot of inbred people out there. What did I tell you? Remember, I told people about that Habsburg jaw. A lot of people who are inbred. The Habsburgs, the Spanish Habsburgs, the, the Spanish royal family, they start getting them big ass jaws because of them big long heads because they were inbred. They start looking weird. Look at Baltimore. Look at some of them niggas in Baltimore. Look at them big weird head niggas. That's out, some of them out there in Baltimore. Weird shaped head niggas. Take a look at them. Take a real good look at them. Some of them, not all. I'm talking about we got some riders in Baltimore, but take a look at some of them niggas out there. How weird they look. <laughs> huh? And they kind of put two and two together. <laughs> huh? Man. But yeah, the incest thing was real heavy out there. You look at these long head, big jawed niggas with these. Habsburg chins out there. That's very unusual looking. Uh, and how weird they are. <laughs> uh, it's a mess. It is. Yeah, they got them big ass Habsburg jaws. They look weird. Look weird. Do weird shit. <clears throat> For a minute, but they were talking about... For a long time, they were talking about how rough the women in Baltimore looked. That was like online. I remember about a decade ago, that was the thing. They were talking about how rough the women look and all that. That's a, look, and I love Baltimore. I go out to Baltimore. Baltimore shows me a lot of love. So I'm not dumping on Baltimore. I got a lot of love for Baltimore. Baltimore, they've been supporting me majorly. I love Baltimore. I do. But there's a lot of weird activity that goes on, and there's a context to it. Yeah. There's a context to it. Yeah. But um <clears throat> but I digress. We got a lot of people in the room. We got six thousand of y'all in here. Look, hope y'all going to rootworkstyle.com to get your root work deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. Rootworkstyle.com. We got the new lucky lavender scent. We got the Mango Mojo sent at Rootwork. Who's texting me? Who the hell's texting me? At RootworkStyle.com. Who is this? Yeah, RootworkStyle.com. Hold on, my, my assistant is texting me. Hold on. Okay, hold on one second. Hold on. Sorry about that. We are in here heavy. Let me show y'all. Y'all go to RootworkStyle.com. Some other stuff we got to talk about tonight. Hold on, let me go here. RootworkStyle. Dot com to get the deodorant and this is an all natural deodorant smells very good and some of y'all need it all right rootworkstyle.com let me go down all right we got the the new that's the mango mojo 
Very good scent. Nice citrusy scent. And um, we got four scents now. We got the Lucky Lavender going on. The Lucky Lavender scent is popping. And we got that um, um, vanilla scent that's real popping too, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to miss that. Very good scents, ladies and gentlemen. Other stuff that's going on out here now, you know, people are still running with the whole Puerto Ricans and hip hop narrative. They, people are still desperately trying to push that narrative. They're still trying to push that narrative. And I think I played this before, and this is circulating around again. This dude here trying to quote Buster Rhymes as a source about Puerto Ricans influencing hip hop and all of this stuff just because they say so. Hold on. These people can never tell who, what, when, and what did they influence and what did they do? Hold on. Hold on. Puerto Ricans was part of hip hop in the beginning. And people like Buster will tell you we was there in the South Bronx. The origin of hip hop was started of black and Puerto Rican people. We created the deepest culture in the f hell. Our influence is embedded in the culture already, so facts is facts. Okay, and you know what? And family, they never ever tell you what the influences were. <sighs> they never ever ever tell you what the influences were. Every time they say that, it's nothing specific. They can never tell you what you actually brought to the table. They never can tell you. They can never say, yeah, we did this. We actually pioneered this skill. We pioneered this element. It's always, I was there. What did you bring? See, with black folks, we can always point out, especially foundational black Americans, we can point out what we brought to the table in any genre. We can point out what we brought to the table. See, when somebody creates something successful and you're black, we're required to bring something to the table. You just can't show up and be like, hell, I'm here. Let me get credit. No, we're, requi we're required to bring something to the table. I saw an interview recently with Johnny Gill. Shout out to Johnny Gill and New Edition. They're going to be up in Vegas doing a, a, a temporary re residency. But with the Johnny Gill and um, New Edition situation, he was talking about how they got together and how they, they needed each other. They blew each other up. Because New Edition, remember when, how many people remember when Johnny Gill first got with New Edition in 88, the any Heartbreak Tour? At, in 1988, New Edition, you know, they were a child group. They were around 88. They were 18, 19, 20 at that point. They're coming out of the teeny bop stuff to grown men. Usually when a child group, when they grow up, they fall off. You, you do not have children's groups growing up and transitioning into adulthood because you identify them with that teeny lollipop thing. That's why y'all remember groups like the boys, they fell off. No, no disrespect, but they disappeared. They grew up and you never heard of them again. So you see a kid group and they're known for these kid songs, these baby childish candy songs when they grow up you know you what you're known for you can't be a grown ass man trying to replicate that you know it's hard to rebrand you know new edition never fell off and when they transitioned when they were about to transition from kid group to adults they in, ingeniously brought in Johnny Gill, who was a young dude who sounded old as hell. See, that's what Johnny brought to the table. Johnny didn't have any big hits in the 80s. He had a couple of cool little records, but he was on the radar. And the problem with Johnny was that he was this young kid. He was a teenager who sounded like a 40-year-old man. So the record labels didn't know what to really do with them. So you couldn't have a, a, a little kid who sounds like a grown man singing kiddie songs. 
because it would sound weird. Like, I want to meet you at the playground, baby. You know, that don't sound good. And you can't have them really a 14-year-old singing adult stuff. I want to rub you down in the playground. You can't have that. <laughs> Ride on my big wheel. And then I pull your breast out. You can't have that. A little kid rapping about or singing about something sexual. So they didn't know what to do with Johnny Gill. But when New Edition was transitioning, he was a perfect fit for that. He brought in a mature sound. He was already with a group of young men who were still kids to a certain degree. Bobby had left and blown up. And Bobby was like, hey, I'm going solo and I ain't doing none of that kiddie shit. I'm about to throw dick around. Yeah. So Bobby became immediately became the bad boy. So now New Edition, you out here doing the little kiddie stuff and you got Bobby Brown out here grinding and throwing his crotch on women. And y'all... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, you got to do something. Yeah? You can't be no old nigga trying to still sound like the, the you know, the, the little teeny bop. You know, you got to have somebody in there to transition you. And that's Johnny was a perfect fit for that. Johnny was perfect. So they got together and New Edition rebranded, blew the hell up. Any Heartbreak classic album. Classic. Yeah, classic ass album. And then Bobby got back in the group and then they, they, these guys sell out venues to this very day. But the point is, each of them brought something to the table. See, we know how to bring things to the table to complement each other. You bring things to complement each other. New Edition brought something. They brought a, a young fan base. They brought a string of hits. Johnny brought a maturity level there and a vocal range that was new that could transition. That's why they were singing these songs together and the vocal um, arrangements were mixed with the, the young teeny bop voices with the mature. And it, it clicked. It clicked beautifully. Yeah. And that saved New Edition and transitioned them into a superpower adult group. That's why they're touring to this day and other people have fallen off. You know? Yeah, I, I go see New Edition every time, um, anytime they come to town. I love seeing those brothers. I mean, they're phenomenal. But, but going back to what I'm saying about the whole hip-hop thing, see, other groups, they sit here and try to claim the success of something without them actually bringing anything to the table. And I think that's very disrespectful to us where you can just pull up a chair and say, yeah, I didn't bring shit to this thing. I didn't bring no elements. I didn't bring no DJing. I didn't bring no rapping. I didn't bring no graffiti. I didn't bring anything, but I'm Latino when I'm here. So you just bring your Latin ethnicity. That's you think that's good enough. Well, I was there. What'd you bring, dude? What did you bring to the table? I was right there. I was right at the park. And what did you bring? Man, I was there, though. I was right there. Well, you brought your Latin ethnicity, and we're supposed to give you props for that, for you just showing up? No, thank you. No. And that's not divisive. That's very insulting. Where you don't you don't think you have to bring anything to the table, but you're Latin ethnicity, and you're supposed to get the same kind of props for creating something that we put blood, sweat, and tears in creating. No, very disrespectful. That's entitlement. Yeah? All that, I was there. Nah. I lived in the projects. I was right there next to No, 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 no. Well, Joe Conzo took pictures. Nah. Speaking of, speaking of entitlement, speaking of damn entitlement, family, y'all know they keep, they keep trying to drag us. They're trying to drag foundational black Americans into the conversation about Israel and Palestine. They keep trying their desperate, desperate way to drag us in this thing. 
family. Why don't they? look at look at these articles that's coming out? Why black American lives depend on backing Israel? No, no, what, no. How? How? What are you talking about? What, 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 what are you talking about? Our lives depend on it. No, no, we're fine. We don't have to put the cape on for nobody. Family, we are so codified right now when people are salty because we're not jumping up caping for nobody. We're letting everybody hold their own nuts. You are not going to shame us for into fighting for you when you, do, you don't fight for us. You're not going to shame us. We don't owe nobody nothing. Leave us the hell alone. We don't owe nobody nothing. People have shitted on us left and right. And because we don't have the cape on for you, they want to crap on us. Listen to your boy. This moment got a lot of nerve. This one here, family, y'all boy, he got a lot of nerve. Oh, this is your boy. Your boy got a lot of nerve. Listen to him. Hold on. Yo, if 20 American tourists, 20 American tourists, forget the 1,200 people that were murdered, slaughtered, civilians. If 20 American civilians, all African American, all black, all ages, were taken hostage and 10 of them were murdered and raped. And there was 10 surviving American tourist hostages that were all black. There's not one motherfucker in this country that would be talking about cease fire. There's not one person. It would be bring the fucking hostages back and they better be, they better be alive they better be pristine. There wouldn't be no ceasefire. There would be no run. Can you imagine college students ripping down posters of 10 black people from America if they were taken hostage and 10 others were raped and murdered? Nobody, nobody would be saying shit. The African-American community would be Demanding they came back. White people, black. What the, what, what is he talking about? Dude, what, what is this Habsburg jaw having buffoon? Dude, what is he talking about? What is that? Don't, none of what he's saying ain't even making sense. These people just got us so damn rent free. What? I don't even, I, I don't even know what he's babbling about. What is he talking about? I thought it was just me. I, that's why I played it. So y'all can kind of figure out what the hell is he, what does that have to do with us? What the hell are you talking about? And what does it have to do with black Americans? What are you talking about? It's these people. We're so rent free. It don't even make sense. They can't even make sense of their babble. They just have to mention us. If it was from African Americans, y'all would be, it wouldn't be a ceasefire. The hell does that mean? What does that even mean? Boy, they got to drag us in the mix. This desperate ass thought process of drag, you got to bring us in it somehow. There's a war going on. A gazillion miles away from us, we're over here eating um, um, soul food and mac and cheese. We're all right. We're all right. I don't, don't want to speak on what y'all doing, but hey, good luck to you. I'm over here eating buffalo wings. You African Americans wouldn't want to see fire. Y'all would. What? Huh? Leave us alone. Please, y'all hold your own nuts and go do you. We're not obligated to put the cape on and y'all just mentioning us. We don't have nothing to do with any of it. We have nothing to do with it. We are staying out of it. That's what collectively, and that's killing them. They're so, they're so used to us jumping up with the capes and doing all the fighting for them. We're sitting it out. They don't know what to damn do. Because now you got to fight on your own. You got to hold your own nuts. 
So all of these people from all different sides keep dragging us into this stuff. Continue to be Bennett. We ain't in it. Listen, we don't have anything to do with none of that stuff going on. We're not obligated to do anything for anybody. Y'all sit up here and let us get slaughtered. Y'all let every and each and everything happen to us. We don't get no help from nobody. And there's been this constant t- people trying to shame us into getting involved. Hey, y'all black people, what? where are the black people? We ain't going to forget y'all. Bl- hey, well, keep remembering then. Well, y'all can't threaten us with anything because you've already done everything negative to us. See, that's the thing. That's another reason why they're frustrated because we're sitting it out collectively. You got a couple of Democratic shills that they're putting out there that's getting shut down. But collectively, we're sitting it out and they're not used to that. So they want to threaten us with something. But you've already done everything to us. You are, you're not giving us anything to deprive us of. You can't threaten to take anything away from us. You don't give us nothing. So we're giving you the same energy you're giving us. Nothing. You do you. We're letting you handle your own business. We just, we ain't in it. We're not in it. These little veil threats you're doing, it doesn't work because you're not doing anything for us anyway. We're Like somebody said in the room, we're focusing on black on black crime. That's what we're, y'all been telling us to focus on that. That's what we're focusing on, black on black crime. We're focusing on that. But yeah, let's continue to be Bennett. This is not something we need to jump into. We ain't got nothing to do with it. Everybody hold their own nuts. Everybody fight their own battles. But you're not going to shame us into getting involved with anybody's side. No, nobody's side. We, we, this ain't got nothing to do with us. And that's what it is. Anyway, let me get up out of here, family. Remember, go to, and the link is below, rootworkstyle.com. Go to rootworkstyle.com to get the brand new scents from Rootwork. We got the Lucky Lavender and the Mango Mojo scents. You got to get these now. They feel good. They smell good. The Rootwork deodorant, all natural. It has the High John the Conqueror root in it. A powerful foundational black American herb that we used um, throughout the centuries here. A foundational black American themed deodorant brand. This is from our foundational black American culture. And everybody can be a part of it and share it. Go to rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. And y'all need it because some of you are musty. All right? Let's keep it a buck. Some of you are good people, but sometimes you smell like a baby billy goat. You're going to need some of that root work. Some of the brothers, I suggest this this Lucky Lavender. You dig? Has a nice, cool scent to it. Has a nice, cool scent. When you are with the ladies, they can feel your vibe and feel your aura. It keeps that must off of you. You can put a little dab of this on. You'll be good for a couple of days. I'm telling you, this is good stuff, and it lasts very long. All right? It's, ladies, let me talk to the women. Some of you ladies, some of y'all are very cute. And I got the mango mojo for you. That mojo. We got the mojo running. That's part of foundational black American culture. Ladies, sometimes, listen. Ladies, sometimes you're very cute. Sometimes you've been working all day. You come home from work and you want to lay up with your man. But you've been working up a little sweat under that blouse at work. And you got a nice little shape, but your titties are musty. So you put this under your arm and just kind of rub it around like that. That'll get that side titty where it gets a little musty right around there. That side uh, do want to get a little frisky. So he'll grab on that booby, and that booby got a little stench to it. This is going to help that out, ladies. So you got that that post-work must titty. This is going to help that. This is going to help that. that Sometimes that side titty is a little musty. This is going to help that, ladies. And your man is going to be comfortable giving you what you need after work. All right? 
Your man is going to get you what you need after work, ladies. This is what you, that, that mango scent is a very good scent. It's a very good scent. So listen, so listen, listen, rootworkstyle.com, rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen, and it's unisex. So men and women can use all the different fragrances and scents. We purposely made them unisex so that everybody can use them. If you are a stud, we got my studs out here. Sometimes you want to be a lady. Sometimes you want to be a dude someday. All right. Whatever day, whatever you want to be that day, you can get some of this root work. All right. If you want to be James one day or you want to be Jamie the next day. All right. Whatever you want to do. All the studs out here. This is what you need. I, I know I have a lot of stud listeners. Shout out to the studs. Because you too, I know you you kind of want to dress like a dude, but you don't have to smell like a big nigga. You can have your, your, your scent on too. So you can have a little sensitivity with your studding. All right? I know sometimes you want to go the whole full nine by being a big old husky nigga, but you still got to have some deodorant on. Even the women who's laying up with you, they don't want a stench on to them. And there's nothing worse than a musty stud. So get your root work at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com. We don't want um, <laughs> musty studs out here. Because <laughs> we I love I love my studs out here. I love y'all. Especially down there in Atlanta. All right. But anyway, y'all go to rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com. All right, I'm up out of here, guys.